In order to understand the fundamental theorem and how it pertains to this um, symbol, we need to understand where this thing comes from. Uh, when you set up a definite integral for a, a function, it all starts as a partition. Right? We want the definite integral from a to b, um, little f of x. So we partition the region into x1, x2, x3, x4, etc., etc., into however many subintervals we like. Uh, so this will be delta x1, and there's a delta x2, and delta x3, and, and so on. And we pick numbers, non-specific numbers, inside each of these subintervals, operate the, the function on it, and that just corresponds to a, a rectangle. And we do that over and over and over again. And then we just add up all of, of those values, and we symbolize it in sigma notation as this. So this is really just a string of things being multiplied, all right? It's f of x1 star times delta x1 plus f of x2 star times delta x2, base times height, base times height, base times height. And we say that when we take the limit as delta x max goes to zero, this gets symbolized by this, all right? That's what that means. It's just a symbol that stands for the area or the net signed area underneath the uh, curve. It's independent of how we choose the xk stars because we theorize that uh, as long as we use infinitely many of them and the width of the largest one approaches zero, the final answer is going to be what it, it's going to be regardless of how we chose to you know, make the xk stars because everything is shrinking down to zero. So we got to go one step back. We're, we have to examine what this means. Okay. Something special happens with this um, expression that allows us to rewrite it very neatly. So let's consider it right here. This is nothing more, I said, than base times site, base times site, base times site. So I'm going to dispense with the sigma and write it like this. f of x1 star delta x1 plus f of x2 star delta x2 plus et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The last one will be little f of x uh, n star, delta x n. Now this is all small f's now, all right? Just for small f. Base times site, base times site, base times site. And we said that this was, now, how we choose our xk stars is going to affect how this finite sum turns out, all right? If we do a left end point, it's going to be different than had we chosen a, a right end point. Um, but in the end, when we take the limit, it doesn't matter how we choose them, and that's what we're going to capitalize on. What we're going to do is choose the x stars in a specific way, right? And uh, so instead of x1 star, I'm going to let, I'm going to choose it to be x1 bar, which was the value guaranteed to exist inside that first sum interval by the mean value u theorem, right? If we do that, then f of x1 bar times delta x1 can be traded in for the antiderivative of f evaluated at the endpoints of the interval. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Right. What was once this by the appropriate choice of x1 star, I choose it to be that special number from the mean value theorem, I can actually rewrite it as f of x1 minus big F of x of 0. That's the first one. Likewise with the second one. See this here? Uh, you can apply the same thing for the first, second, and for all of the, the, the subintervals. Right? As long as I choose them to be these special bar numbers, I can trade everything that looks like this in for something that looks like this, and we're going to do exactly that. So what was once this will now be big F of um, X2 minus big F of X1 plus and so on and so on. And the last one will be big F of X of N uh, minus big F of X of uh, N minus 1. Now, draw back for a second and look at what happens. O okay, we have two copies of X of F, big F of X1, two copies of big uh, F of X2. So this is going to cancel with this. And then this is going to cancel with something that popped up in here. And so on down the line. And then this one is going to cancel with something that popped up here. So what we wind up with, what survives? All we have is the, the endpoints. We have big F of X sub N minus big F of X sub zero. Well, what were these? 
well, these were the endpoints, all right? So this is really big F of B minus big F of A. Who cares? Well, what this says is that anything that looks like this, okay, for any partition that you make, you can choose the XK stars in a certain manner such that the whole thing will equal this. So if we have a sum that's like this, 1 to n, okay, by choosing the xk stars in a specific manner, we can make this actually equal to this. It's the antiderivative of the function, just evaluated at the endpoints and subtracted. That's really good news, because now we take the limit as delta x max goes to 0. Let, let's assume that every Riemann sum that we make is like this. Well. When we take the limit, this equals, um, from A to B, f of x dx by definition. And by the mean value theorem, and what we had just discovered, this also equals this. So when we take this limit, well, there's no x in here. In fact, there's nothing in here but the antiderivative and the endpoints. So this must equal this. So what we wind up with in the end is from A to B, of little f of x dx equals the antiderivative of b at b minus the antiderivative at a, which says that any time that we come up with an expression that's like this, we can evaluate it provided we know how to find the antiderivative of this function. All we have to do is anti-differentiate it, plug it into the endpoints of the integral, and subtract.